What's up, everybody? Time for another episode of Mythic Conversations. Whether you're jumping in live right now or whether you're catching this on the replay, either here on the Mythic Legions Cabal or whether you're catching the replay on YouTube, thank you very much for joining. Like every week, we're going to start slow, let people start showing up before we get started with the conversation. And it's a conversation I'm super excited for tonight. Travis and Steve, thank you both for joining and supporting me tonight. Nate, nice to see you. Uh, very excited for this evening. Chris, thank you for being here. Everyone's jumping on now. Steven says, it is my favorite conversation. Well, thank you very much, Steven. I actually was a little bit behind on the podcast, so I've had a lot to listen to the last few mornings as I go out for my morning walk. It's been wonderful. I was very interested in uh, your take on everything going on. <laughs> Brian, thank you for joining. Uh, Nate saying, anxious for this episode, Jeremy. Yeah, that's awesome. Speaking of slow, Steve is here, Travis says. Yeah, Nate, I'm... I've been looking forward to this evening for literally months now. Don't want to get into it just yet. Let's let everyone start showing up, um, and then we're going to get started. Uh, very, very excited tonight. As I said last week, if you caught last week's show, um, you know, a lot of episodes of Mythic Conversations are me sharing different tips and tricks, um, as well as hopefully trying to inspire in some way. Um, tonight, really none of that. No tips and tricks. Tonight is literally going to be me gushing about a project that I'm super, super excited to share with everybody. Um, let's get going. Let me see what's going on here, and let's do the intro like I do every week. Uh, thank you all for joining. This is Mythic Conversations. If you're checking it out for the first time and you're not familiar with who I am, my name is Jeremy Gerard. I'm a Mythic Legions collector and customizer. I also have the distinct privilege of being the digital marketing manager for Four Horsemen Studios, where I take care of everything at sourcehorseman.com. If you want to follow me, the information's right there. You can check out my Instagram, my Instagram uh, account, which is at Mythic Customs, all one word. You can also check out my website, www.mythiccustoms.com. Again, all one word. All the customs that I showcase are listed on my website, including lots of pictures, lots of different recipes, so you can figure out how to, uh, to make some of those customs for yourself. Um, the customs I'm showing tonight actually aren't on the website yet. They are on my Instagram page. And as I said at the top of the show, very excited to finally be able to share this project with you tonight. If you've been following my social media, my Instagram feed, everything I've been posting here on the Cabal for the past you know, couple days, you know that this project is called the Legends of the Kitsune series. Um, it's something I've been working on since late 2019. So I mean, this is probably six months that's gone into this project to bring it to all of you. And it's, it's an interesting story, I think, um, what it started out as to what it actually has ended up as today. Um, we're going to look at some of the customs. I'm going to talk to you about how the project came to light and, and most importantly, to answer a lot of questions, I'm going to talk to you tonight about how you can get some of these Kitsune Fox pieces for yourself. So super excited. Let's see what everyone's saying. Uh, Amy's saying hello. Thank you very much. Hello to you as well. Brian, excited for some Foxy news. I feel like there's going to be a lot of Foxy puns tonight. Uh, Mickey. First time to catch one of these. Well, thank you very much for joining. Jay, nice to have you here. Chun, Mike, what's up, everybody? Len, Len is joined. And Len LaGuardia, uh, going to be talking a lot about Len LaGuardia tonight, as well as Walter DeMarco from Mass Customs. Both of them are here, and they are both incredibly important uh, people to talk about during this project. They contributed to it in an immeasurable way. Um, very happy to have them here tonight. I, I wish we could have done something that was more kind of like the, the My Wife is Gonna Kill Me podcast where we have multiple people on at once being able to talk. I'm still, again, trying to work on some of the technology to bring in guests, hopefully down the road. So 
I will do my best to talk a little bit about uh, you know their contribution tonight. Actually, I'm going to talk a lot about their contribution because it was so substantial to this. Um, so you've seen these customs all week, the, these legends of the Kitsune, um, these fox customs. Kitsune is literally Japanese for fox. Uh, as a lot of you know, I'm very much into Japanese culture, and uh, you know, I did all my samurai series. I a couple weeks ago had mentioned that I'm learning how to speak Japanese, um, so it's something that appeals to me. Uh, I also really have always liked the anthro type characters, the animal warrior characters. Um, I mean, frankly, it's what got me into uh, Four Horsemen Studios to begin with. You know, the first figure, I collected their stuff when they were back at McFarlane in the Spawn days. Um, but, you know, before, uh, after that, when they formed their own studio and they started doing their own products, the, that first wave of Minotaurs, the Zethius wave with the, uh, the seven Minotaurs, um, and I jumped on that. And I got a bunch of those um, into the Ramathor wave that had all the elephant and, uh, the, you know, those type of larger scale figures. I loved those. Uh, you know, and obviously a big part of what has helped propel the studio to the success they have today was the Kickstarter for the Gothatropolis Ravens. I still, all of those lines I just mentioned, all of those waves, I still have a number of them in my collection today. And those type of anthro characters have always been something I really, really like. So I got to a point where I was thinking about different kinds of customs I wanted to do and I got it in my head that I really wanted a Kitsune custom. I saw some some art of like the, these fox warriors, these Kitsune warriors, and I said that'd be a really cool thing to add to my collection. Um, I really I got it in my head that I wanted to do that. So and this is back probably early 2019, late 2018 even. This is a while ago that I got this idea in my head that I wanted to do these Fox Warriors. And it was right around the time that a lot of the 3D printing stuff was just really getting started. Um, up until that point, most of the customs I had done used heads from other figures, um, Masters of the Universe figures and so forth. So the whole advent of the 3D printing really opened up a lot of possibilities and it made it feasible that maybe you could have something made that didn't already exist out there. Um, I'm going to check the comments real quick so I don't get too, too behind. Yeah, a lot of people just giving love to, uh, giving love to Len, well deserved. Anthony, nice to have you here. Thank you for joining. Uh, as, as I was saying, I really wanted these Kitsune customs, so I started looking to see if there were any figures out there that I could use, and I couldn't find any existing figures that had, like, a good fox head. The only ones I could find were, if you've ever seen the, the movie The Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is a wonderful film, um, there are figures from that movie. They don't fit in with Mythic Legions. They're super cartoony, and actually the Mr. Fox figure is wildly expensive, so that was a no-go. Um, I actually bought a couple different Rocket Raccoon figures, um, a couple different scales. I bought a Marvel Select one, you know, just a few different ones, thinking maybe I can paint Rocket's head oranges and white colors, and you know I can kind of create a, a fox-looking character that way. And that I couldn't find one that actually scaled really well, and it looked silly anyway. It just it wasn't it clearly was a raccoon. It was clearly Rocket Raccoon painted orange. So back to the drawing board. Um, I even looked at those little like uh, wildlife figurines like uh, Papo and Safari Limited. You know, they have them at like, uh, I mean, I see them at Michael's craft stores, but you see them at a lot of different places. Um, I even tried to find different fox figurines thinking maybe I can like slice the head off, slice off the tail and put them together that way. And once again, I couldn't find one that was a proper scale and I couldn't find one that had a nice sharp sculpt. A lot of those little figurines are much softer sculpts. They're not as detailed and crisp. Um, they would have completely stuck out like a sore thumb on a Mythic Legions figure, even if I could find the right scale. Um, so then I started talking to different people. I remember there was a point where I was having a conversation with the 3D artist, um, Seba Dom. And you know, he was asking me, he was doing a bunch of different sculpting, and he was asking me what kinds of 
figureheads I would like to see. And I mentioned I really want a Kitsune. And I explained to him what it was. And I showed him some art that, you know, was indicative of what I was looking for. And he kind of was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, maybe someday. Um, I, I could tell it wasn't what he was really interested in doing, which was totally fine. He was doing some really cool stuff that didn't appeal to his sensibility at that point. Um, so I kind of just put it aside and stopped thinking about it until late last year, I reached out to another 3D artist whose name is Walter DeMarco. So Walter posts online under the, the name Mass Customs, M-A-S-S. -S. Um, I've talked about Walter on the show before. I had shown a custom I did, kind of like a dark knight that I called Baron Sorrow. And he's got like a cool like helmet that I had painted, really worn. Um, his parts are available on Shapeways. Um, I reached out to him to actually ask him a question about his parts. And he expressed his admiration for my customization work. Um, and he actually sent me some of the parts at no charge. Um, he said, look, I'd love you to use my parts in your work. I think it'd be an honor. So he sent those to me, which was super, super cool of him. And I did use them, as I said, in the Baron Sorrow um, figure. But that kind of started a conversation between Walter and myself. And he expressed that, you know what, I would love to do a project for you, something that specifically you would be looking for. I think it'd be a really fun collaboration. Is there anything you're interested in? And I said, well, funny you ask. I've long wanted to do one of these Fox characters, these Kitsune. So I sent him the control art that I'd been considering, that I'd been working on. And um, right away, he was like, yeah, I'd love to work on this with you. Uh, we came up with a price and, you know, kicked it off. And ultimately, what I asked for, what I commissioned from him was three pieces. I wanted a normal fox head. I wanted a fox head that was like an insert that could go inside of one of the Mythic Legion's hoods. And then I wanted a tail. Because originally, when I was conceiving this, this figure, which is the first one I showed this week, this is the recipe I really had in mind. This kind of Kitsune Ranger, um, very indicative. A lot of people, when I posted him, said that he reminded them of Robin Hood, the Disney's animated 1970s movie of Robin Hood as a fox. Um, it reminded them of, of that. So, you know, those are the parts that we got done. That this, like I said, this tail this head that goes inserts into the, the hood and then a regular head. And I'm going to talk at length about the parts and how they're attached and all that in a minute. Um, so we came up with a price, uh, told him what I wanted. And remember, at this point, this is a personal project. This is not something that I'm intending to sell to anybody else. This is literally to scratch an itch. This is because I'm saying I want these Kitsune pieces in my own collection. I want to work with them. And the only thing I have in mind is to paint it just like that, is that traditional orange and white type fox colors. You know, this is an example of the, the normal non-hooded Kitsune head. And that's exactly what I was picturing. So he gets to work, and again, this is late last year, and, you know, Walter lives in Argentina. So he's over there in Argentina and, you know, we're exchanging uh, messages back and forth. He's apologizing for his, you know, the way his English, which he speaks perfectly fine English. There was nothing to apologize for. Um, it was a great, great collaboration. You know, I showed him what I was looking for. I talked him through it. He even did, at one point, he did some other like magic spelly type pieces. And I was like, yeah, that's not really what I was thinking of for the character. So we took that off. It was a nice collaboration. Uh, we eventually, he did print up a few test pieces for himself in Argentina. Um, but it ultimately got to the point that I needed to have the parts so I could test them out for myself. So again, this was a commission. He sent me the digital files. And now I get to the point where I'm thinking, okay, how am I gonna get these things printed? Um, I've never done this before. I've never done 3D printing. I don't have a 3D printer, so I'm not sure what to do next. Um, and my first reaction is I'm gonna use Shapeways. Shapeways.com is a print on demand service. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna upload these to Shapeways um, and I'll get them printed. 
you know, obviously a lot of you might be thinking, oh, why didn't you go to my action figure customs? Um, again, this is a personal project of mine. You know, Rob is running his very successful business over there. He gets a lot of requests of people that ask him to print stuff or whatever. Um, I didn't want to bother him. You know, at this point, he's doing his own thing. I didn't want this to be something that was going to be one of his products um, because it was a personal thing of my own. I don't want to bother him. So I'm like, I'm going to use Shapeways. That's that's my plan. Um, little did I know, I mean, the, the parts from Walter were beautiful, but they weren't production ready. There were definitely some changes that needed to be made. And had I gone to Shapeways and just printed them there, there would have been a lot more back and forth between me testing them and getting back to Walter. Um, but before I ever did that, I saw a post from fellow Mythic Legions fan and Cabal member, Anthony Husseel. So Anthony Husseel posts something in the Cabal some pictures of a 3D printer that he had just gotten in. And he's like, you know, super excited. I've got my 3D printer. Um, he posts under the name, the Toy Forge. So he was starting to do some 3D printing himself. So I reached out to Anthony, who I had communicated with Anthony, you know, a bit on the Cabal uh, previously. I met Anthony at uh, Legion's, uh, Legions Con last year, super great guy, really enjoyed meeting him and talking to him. Um, so I, I right out of the gate here, I'm like, I'd rather work with someone I know than deal with, you know, Shapeways that I don't know anybody there. I mean, it's a faceless company. It's a service. Um, Anthony was super cool. He was very honest with me. And he said, hey, I, I told him I've got a project. Would you be interested in maybe doing some printing? And he said, look, thank you for thinking of me, but I'm just getting started in this. I'm not the person to ask. Um, who you want to talk to is Len LaGuardia. So Len is someone who I hadn't really spoken with very much. I met him at Legion's Con as well. Um, but Len is actually a pretty quiet, uh, quiet, shy guy. So I hadn't had a ton of interactions with Len. The few that I had were super positive. So I reached out to him and I made the same pitch. And I said, hey, I've got this project that I'm working on. Um, I told him the background. I said, I need someone to print some pieces for me. Would you be willing to do that? And he says, yeah, I'd absolutely love to help you out. That, that's great, send me the files. So I sent him the files and I must have had five messages back and forth with Len before I just sat back and said, oh my goodness, this guy's a rock star. He, right out of the gate, just was so responsive, was so creative. I mean, he had that great, that great combination of understanding the technical aspects of 3D printing, but Len is also a collector and customizer as well, so he understood what I was trying to accomplish. Um, so I could talk to him like a fellow customizer, and he could translate that into what had to happen actually through production. Um, if you don't know, Len run, Len's a creative dude to begin with. He runs a, a, a printing company, um, the, the uh, you know, Legion's cast shirt and everything that I had on. Len had sent that to me. Um, great guy. Len, Walter had mentioned, uh, Walter Hagen had mentioned that the Mythic, Le the Mythic Legion's cabal, like the Motorhead style shirt, Len is actually doing some test prints of that right now for an eventual run. So Len's already, you know, doing a lot of creative stuff. And the fact that he was already into 3D and he was a collector and customizer right out of the gate, it just worked so well. And he was able to go in to Walter DeMarco's files and modify them as needed. Um, and he praised Walter DeMarco's files. He said, these are gorgeous gorgeous files so easy to work with what he was able to change was some of the technical aspects like specifically the way the tail pegs in um, the angle of the peg the size of the peg those were parts that would have been very very difficult to fix just through shape ways um, so Len being able to make the changes print the files with his printers in his shop and then test them right there was an absolutely invaluable part of this project. Once again, this is a personal project at this point. That's all that I'm intending to do with this. Finally, we get to the point, and Len's showing me examples of what he's printing. We finally get to the point where 
we're a couple, you know, a couple series of prototypes in, and he says, I think I've got it dialed in. I, I, I figured out some things I need to figure out. I'm going to send you a bunch of prototype pieces. Now, this is the few months ago at this point. This is the first time I finally get these pieces in hand. So I finally get them in hand, and, you know, this is what I get. So I get pieces like this. This is an unpainted Kitsune head. And then this is an unpainted, I said the insert that goes in the hood, that's actually what it looks like. And you can see it's just, it's not a full head, it's this insert. If you've never pulled out one of the heads from the hood pieces, remember last week when I showed you how to remove parts that aren't meant to be removed and I showed you how to remove the elf heads and I said, this is going to come in handy very, very soon. That's what I was talking about, being able to put these in. Um, and then the tails. And we'll talk more about how these are attached in a minute. But I finally get those in, and I got to tell you, the minute I start working with them, I was overjoyed. I was so excited for them. They painted beautifully. Um, the quality of the resin that Len was using was so good. I've dropped these things. I drop, I drop parts all the time. I've definitely had some issues with some of the 3D printed stuff breaking on me. Um, I've dropped these plenty of times. I've only ever broken one piece. And I've had probably, I don't know, Len, 100 pieces through my hands at this point. Um, quite a few. Uh, super excited about it. So I'm working with Len. And we're getting to the part where we're going to talk about how you are going to be able to get these for yourself. Um, David, nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Um, La Lado, Lado asking, is the fox for sale? Going to talk about that in a little bit. Len said he's blushing. Well, you should be, Glenn. Well, you shouldn't be blushing. You should. Every, everything I'm saying about you is well-deserved, my friend. Uh, Jennifer, nice to have you here. Uh, so as I was saying, we're, we're at the point now where it's still a personal project. And Len reaches out to me and says, hey, can I talk to you about something? And I said, yeah, sure. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm totally up to you. I'm totally cool making these just for yourself. No problem at all. We had come up with a price that I was going to pay him for the pieces. Um, he said, you know, I this is something that I've been getting ready to start doing for a while now. You know, when I came to Len, he, he had started doing this a while before as a hobby, and he was getting to the point that he was getting ready to start his own company offering 3D printed add-ons. He already had a whole bunch of stuff in development that he was going to hopefully offer. And he says, you know, looking at these pieces, I got to tell you, other fans would love, love, love to have these in their collections as well. Would you consider licensing them to me so I can sell them through my company? Again, this isn't a business I wanted to be in. I didn't want to become a company. I didn't want to start a company offering 3D printed parts. Um, this was very much something for my own collection. This was something where, as a customizer, at this point, I have done legitimately over 400 Mythic Legions customs. I kid you not. Between all the ones I've done for myself, between the ones I've sold, between the handful of commissions I've taken, I've done over 400 customs. Every custom I built has used other people's parts. This was the first time I had an opportunity to build customs using parts that I had a hand in creating. Because um, throughout this entire project, I've served as art director. That has really been my role. While Walter has been a 3D sculptor, while Len has done 3D sculpt modification and all the printing and production, um, art direction and the recipes we're gonna look at in a few minutes, Though that has been my contribution. So that was incredibly rewarding. Um, but I said to Len, I said, listen, you have put so much work into modifying these. These things are largely your files at this point anyway. They're yours. You can have them. You absolutely can take these. You don't have to license them from me. You can take these. You can make these part of the company that you're starting. You can offer these for sale. And then Len kept pushing. Len was like, well, would you be willing to maybe do a bunch of recipes, do some customs with these um, so we can show people the possibilities? And as I'm talking to Len, what we realize and what I realize is one of the things that I really wanted to do with these 
was get my custom work into more people. It's no secret, I sell customs typically every single Saturday. Every single Saturday I have my, my for sale Saturday post. Um, but I'm limited in how many full customs I can do. So on most Saturdays, I sell a single piece. Occasionally, I have more than one, but it's usually one piece. Um, occasionally, there's been a couple weeks this last Saturday, I pulled some stuff out of the cases and sold some older completed pieces. The bottom line is, it's a limited amount of stuff. The amount of people that when I post something, contact me minutes later, minutes after I post it saying, I'll take it, and I have to tell them it's already sold, you know, as a creator, that does bum me out. I'd love to be able to honor all those requests. Um, there are other people that quite frankly just can't afford the customs. Because of the materials that go into producing these, some of these full customs cost me in parts over $100 in parts just to put them together. So when I'm charging between 150 and 225 for a custom, depending on what it costs me to put together, I, there's times where I'm not making a ton of money on these things. Um, but I get that not everyone can afford that. Again, as a creator, I wanna get these into more people's hands. So I had the idea and I talked to Len, I said, I'll tell you what, let's do this. But here's my idea. If we're gonna do this, if we're gonna sell these two things, let's make a bunch of recipes. Like let me create designs that are easy to create because I think that, you know, as a customizer, I see all these other fans. I love the fact that people watch this show and get inspired and say, hey, I, I took a shot at customizing. Um, that is awesome. I love seeing that. I love hearing that. That makes me, that's very, very rewarding for me personally. Um, but I understand there are still lots of people that don't have the, the time, that don't have what they perceive as the skills to do it, or just the desire. Maybe they're like, look, I want to own customs. I don't want to get into that aspect of the hobby. Um, I totally get that. So my goal was if we create recipes that are super easy to execute, this is legitimately an elf ranger. The only figure this uses is an elf ranger. So you don't have to buy four different figures and cannibalize them together. You buy the parts for this set, the Kitsune parts, and you buy have an elf, you may have an elf ranger already in your collection. If you have an extra one, you can make this figure just by buying the parts. That was the goal. That was my goal here is we offer parts at a reasonable price. And when I say we offer parts, I'm talking painted parts. I'm talking that we actually sell fully painted pieces that even non-customizers can very easily add to an existing figure following one of our recipes to create a really cool custom for themselves without having to drop $150, $200 on one of my single pieces to do so. So that's something I said, hey, if we're gonna offer these, if you're gonna sell these, I really think we should do that so more people can get access to these parts and access to my work. So Len says, well, that means you're gonna pay them, right? So I agreed to it. So the first run of painted parts that is gonna be offered by Len's company, I'm gonna actually paint that run. If you buy one of the sets from that run, it's gonna be one of my, it's gonna be one of my pieces. So super excited to offer that. Um, talking a lot about, I keep saying Lens Company. Let me talk about the name there and then we're gonna look at all these customs. So Lens Company is called Wolf King Customs. Um, Wolf King Customs, that name came from apparently the Wheel of Time books by Robert Jordan. There's a character in Wheel of Time. I guess Wolf King is his nickname. It's a, it's a blacksmith character that uh, Len is into those books. That's something that was important to him. So that was a name that he had already selected for his company, Wolf King Customs. Um, like I said, he had already been planning on doing this um, prior to, to me getting involved with, with these pots and asking him to help me out with them. Um, but that's the plan. The plan is that they're gonna offer these parts painted first and then also unpainted for fellow customizers. Because while I really love the idea of these being for non-customizers, I'm a 
customizer, I want my fellow customizers to have access to them as well. So there will be an unpainted run as well. I'm gonna get back to that in a moment. I'm gonna check some comments really quick. We're gonna look at some of the recipes and then I'm gonna talk more about Wolf King Customs and what the pre-order is gonna look like for that. Got a bunch of comments here. Uh, let me go back and see what I missed as I've been rattling on. Um, Eric asked me, since you opened Pandora's box, will those fox and heads be available to you? Yes, they will. I'm going to talk about the sale in a few minutes. Mike, uh, yeah, David. Okay, here's where, here's where I was. Ryan, nice to have you here. I'm catching up a little bit. I'm in back. <laughs> Speaking of Foxy, Travis said, he wasn't talking about me, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, Demon said, I was hoping for painted parts. Yes, painted and painted. Chun, uh, Nate, congrats, guys. This is awesome news. Thank you very much. Joe saying, I am in. Thank you very much, Joe. Yeah, see, Joe's the type of person where, you know, I couldn't only offer these, or Len couldn't only offer these painted because of people like Joe, because genuinely, I ton of custom with customs with these. I want to see someone like Joe or Nikki or Dennis or Drew. I want to see them get these in their hands and see what they do with them. Because I'm so close to the project now, I'm actually excited to see what other people are gonna do. Uh, Anthony saying proud of you guys. Thank you very much, Anthony. And uh, I, I talked about you a few minutes ago. I mean, you had a huge role in actually connecting Len and myself. So thank you very much. Um, Jay saying, I am so awesome. Well, thank you very much. It's very nice to hear. Um, Daniel saying, I think Thistlephone is one of the best Legion. So these foxes are perfect to add more critters to the shelves. I agree completely. One of the customs I showed was adding these parts to a Thistlethorn figure. Super easy custom. Great, great look there. Uh, Mike says, love to have a Jeremy uh, Gerard exclusive. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. Let's see. Okay. Very good. All right. So, again, that was the thought process here is that let's create these cool recipes. I showed you the, the you know, Kitsune Ranger already. And let me talk a little bit about these parts. So, what's going to happen when you get these parts is they don't fit right out of the box. You know, I've been showing these largely on Mythic Legions figures. This is a Mythic Legion show and it's Mythic Conversations. Um, but I've also intentionally been showing pictures of these parts all week on other types of figures. On uh, Star Wars Black Series, uh, I've got some pictures of them on Marvel Legends, pictures of them on Fortnite figures. Um, the reality is these work with a ton of six inch type figures. If you wanna do, you wanna make, the one I posted last night was the black head on a Boba Fett body. Um, Steve and a couple people called them uh, Boba Fox. You want to make Boba Fox? You can totally do that. So these net ports are not specific to Mythic Legions. What you're going to have to do when you get it is you're going to have to use a little bit of blue tack. So this pack of blue tack, this is like that sticky stuff they used to put like posters on the walls this entire package which will last me probably a year um this is like three dollars through amazon super super cheap obviously amazon is prioritizing shipping now so it might take a little while to get it uh, but very very inexpensive to get these and you can also get these at different stores you know target or whatever um not a good time to be going out specifically to buy blue tack you know with all the social distancing but Still, this is very easy to use or any other kind of putty will work. But what I do is I put a little bit of putty on top of the ball neck. Um, and I'm not going to put it on this one because it's actually already got some in the head. But once you do that and you stick the head on, it will actually stick and it won't come off. But you can still move it and pose it. You still have posability, but it also sticks on. That's, that's how you're going to attach these heads. Super, super simple. Um, if you're gonna do this Kitsune Ranger custom, and by the way, the website for Wolf King Customs, which I'll tell you that URL at the end of the show, um, it's gonna have recipes for how to do this. 
part of what we want to do is when we release these, I keep saying we, when Len releases these parts, um, there's going to be recipes on there that you can follow for stuff like this. Um, not everything that Len's company does, that Wolf King does, is going to be kits like this. Between like bigger fleshed out kit projects, they're also gonna offer a number of smaller pieces. I have a few to show you actually that are super cool. I'll show them in a minute. Um, but any of these kit type pieces that have recipes that go along with them, it's going to be something that's gonna be easy to follow and there's gonna be step-by-step -step directions. So how easy is it for you to do this? So say that you buy uh, a kitsune set right and these are going to be available you're going to be able to just buy the head you can just buy the insert head or you can buy a head with a tail either one of the heads with a tail or if you want you can buy a pack that's got both heads and a tail to match um, if you buy the both head and tail to match that's going to give you a slight price discount um, the tails will not be sold separately for the painted versions. Uh, the unpainted versions, they will be sold separately. You can get anything individually. But, but say you got one of those sets, and you have an elf range figure. The only thing you're going to have to do is you do have to paint the net, because the necks on all of these recipes aren't going to match these figures. Um, in the case of the orange, this is the color variation that we call classic orange. In the classic orange version, you can paint the neck either in oranges or you can even paint it white. Because the bottom of the Kitsune Fox's head is white, if you paint the neck white, which is very, very simple, um, work really, really well. You'll paint that neck, pop this little head on. You don't need good hands to do this. You don't need to do a lot of like uh, you know, fancy techniques or anything. The neck largely covered by the head. You don't want it on the elf range to be that flesh neck because it will look a little out of place but all you have to do is pop that head on paint the neck you're good to go if you do want to do the hooded head you will have to follow like the instructions i talked about last week where you'll have to heat the existing elf head and pop the elf ranger's head out and then this piece here this pops right in so that's an elf ranger hood this is designed to just go right inside i find that if you squeeze these down a little bit it makes it a little easier but that just pops right in and then bang there you go you've got the hood now how about the tail so a lot of people weren't aware of this but i had someone email me or message me and ask me if when you use these are you going to have to swap out the waist pieces with the ones from like Borier or Balam because they have the tails um that wouldn't work anyway because those are 1.0 style and these are like 2.0 bodies this is a thwick body um those pelvis pieces wouldn't be compatible anyway but remember the goal here is to make this easy make it so you don't have to buy two and three figures to make these recipes you may not know this, but every single one of these thinner 2.0 bodies, whether we're talking about the taller ones like the, the elves and the females or the goblins, if you actually look at their boom boom, you look at their boom boom, they actually have a little insert that goes right there, okay? So look at this little boom boom. Now, I'm going to if you take this little insert is just right in there see that hole this piece just plugs right in there so it's a funny story actually because they engineered these to have the hole so they could use tails and when they got the prototypes the test shots at the studio eric was telling me that they came in and they realized that every figure that came in you know looked like that and they would they said we we can't we can't allow that that's going to cause a problem for us so what they did was they had that little insert engineered and it gets you know put up there um in the the factory a lot of people aren't even aware that it's there they've never if you've never taken these figures apart you've probably never even noticed that but all you have to do to get the tail is pop that piece out 
and then all the tail does is it's engineered to just fit right in there. Now, I will suggest that a dab of glue is not a bad idea. I usually, once I'm done a custom, take a little dab of the crazy glue, put it in there. Don't have to, you don't have to put a ton of it on because I don't want it to. If I did want to remove it, I want to be able to do it just a tiny, tiny bit. That will to keep it in there. You can see that it's staying in there. Um, I will tell you that having done this on a number of figures, those little ports, some of them are slightly bigger than others. So sometimes when I do the tails, they don't stay in really well. Other times they stay in wonderfully. Um, on the small bodies, I call the small, when I use these pieces on the little figures, I call them critters. When I use them on the bigger ones, those are the rangers, the Kitsune rangers and the Kitsune critters. Those are what the recipes are called. When you look at the, the critter recipes, it's actually really cool because the tail rests right against the ground it's like the perfect size so it actually provides an additional support for the figure and it's a really nice profile the way it just kind of comes down um obviously on the rangers it's not as it's not as low it does hang up a little bit and what i do by the way with the rangers is i tend i've been cutting the capes on them just so the keep drapes around the tail i really like the way that looks the way it kind of comes out the back there so those are the parts that you're going to have available let me check the comments here steven says are there any more sculpts in the works well there are a ton of things in the works as i said um in addition to kit type pieces Len has already, he had already been working on a number of individual type pieces that he was going to offer as little weapon add-ons, as, as little other things. Um, so he's got a number of other products that he's going to be offering. Um, in terms of other kit type pieces like this, there are some other ideas that I know that he is working on. Um, this is something, like I said, I participated with Len for this. Um, not every project that he's going to do, I'm going to be involved with. Um, you know, I'm certainly there as a resource if he wants to bounce ideas off me. But this is Len's company. He's got a lot of stuff he's going to be doing. I know he is working with other artists. I also know that he's talking to Walter DeMarco about some other projects that he has in mind as well. So to make that, to give you a short answer, I just give you a very long-winded answer. Yes, there's lots of other stuff in the works. Other comments? Need a beer for little John. It, it's a good idea. I, trust me, I've thought about it. Again, I like, I love the animal type characters. Len likes the animal characters too, which is ironic. It's cool that we both really like the animal characters. That, that worked really well here. Um, rooster head in the future. Um, you know, there's already a Mythic Legions rooster or a Gothatropolis rooster. So I don't know. I feel like that's I feel like that type of figures has already been done. Um, Jay saying I would love wolf heads. Well, the company is called Wolf King Productions. I don't think it's a stretch to think that they're gonna do wolves at some point. Raccoon Thief. Um, Matt said, "Will there be a limited number of painted ones?" Yes, there will. Uh, just because of the principle of how many I can paint at once. Um, so the plan is that there will be a pre-order that's going to be for the painted ones. Len has already started producing the actual prints themselves. So he's already running these parts. Um, the parts are going to be available in three different colors. Let me talk about that first. So when I started working on these, I'm jumping around because I'm so excited. Just a lot of enthusiasm tonight, bursting. Um, when I started painting these, remember I said I really imagined doing the, the orange color. I immediately started looking at it and in the spirit of Mythic Legions, kind of saying, well, how can I repaint these different ways to get new looks and new characters? And the first one I did there, I looked up different foxes and I found the black foxes. And while I was imagining the 
orange fox is my hero, the, the black version very quickly became my villain. And again, because I really, really liked the, the Japanese connection to these, my samurais, um, I made this one into a samurai, which this uses a Goblin Legion Builder body. Very easy. If you just want to throw these parts on a Goblin Legion Builder body, they work wonderfully. But also adding these Arted Icons samurai parts, like I've shown many times, creates a great, great Kitsune samurai. So I did the black ones. And of course, I had done a Kitsune Ranger. So I did a Kitsune Shadow Ranger as well using the black parts. And once again, you know, whether you use the hooded head or whether you use the unhooded head, they look really, really great. And then, of course, I created, I painted one white, so I wanted an Arctic fox. So this is one that I showed today. Um, and this is nice because this shows the figure on a female torso. One of the other things I hope you're seeing as well is the figures that I'm using here for the recipes, none of them are hard to find. So Thor is probably the hardest one to find right now. He is available pre-order on the Bad Toy Store. Uh, but Talon Frost, though, she's still in stock at Big Bad Toy Store. Goblin Legion Builder, still in stock. Shadow Elf Ranger, still in stock. Elf Ranger, not in stock, but available for pre-order. These figures, you know, I didn't want to create recipes that use like a Gorgo Aether Blade, you, you know, an Otho. Uh, it's great that you only add the parts to one figure, but that one figure is going to cost me $200, $300. That, that's silly. These are all parts that are very, very accessible. You may already have them in your collection. Uh, but this is one that I really like. Um, Talon Frostbow doesn't come with a hood and cape, so this uses the hood and cape from the Ravina figure. So those are the three different color variations that we're going to have available um, in the painted pre-sale. You're going to be able, able to get either the classic orange, the evil black, or the arctic white. And the plan is that the pre-sale is going to happen probably in just over a week. We will announce it in advance so you are aware of it. Um, I already can tell you the pricing, and I think the pricing is very, very compelling. Again. We want people to have these in their hands. If you want a fully painted head, it's going to be $25. Um, I think 25 bucks for a fully a 3D printed, fully painted head is a great value. Um, if you want the head, in, in either of the heads, either the full head or the insert is going to be $25 fully painted. If you want the head and a tail, that'll be $50 fully painted. If you want all three of them together, there's a little bit of a price break. It'll be $65 for all three pieces together. So again, um, you know, if you compare that to, I think what, you know, like Shapeways is charging for unpainted heads, you know, Shapeways, depending on the head itself, is probably gonna run you anywhere from 12 to 20 bucks a head. So $25 for a painted head, that is a price point that I, I thought that people would be comfortable with. Whoop, dropped it. And it didn't break. So very cool. Um, so there will be a limited amount in that first painted run. Um, honestly, we don't know what to expect. We don't know what the interest is going to be. A ton of people have said, I want one. I'm looking forward to one. But I mean, I've certainly learned that people say that. And then when the sale actually starts, things might be different. So we'll see exactly um you know how quickly I mean, how much interest is there um there's going to be a decent number when i say there's going to be a limited amount there's not going to be you know 10 there's going to be a, a few that are going to be able to buy there's going to be a, a decent number that are people going to have access to uh, i'm going to check the comments in a minute because i'm like 30 comments behind um but just to finish the sale after the pre the the painted sale it's going to take like four to six weeks to fill those orders because they do have to finish being printed, ship to me, I need to paint them, ship them back so Len can ship them all out. 
um, there will be an order for unpainted parts, okay? I believe the prices on unpainted parts, I believe an unpainted head is gonna be $12. I believe an unpainted tail is gonna be 15. Um, and then there'll be some, some sets of them together that might have a little bit of a price discount if you buy them together. So cheaper to buy them unpainted if you're a customizer and you wanna put your spin on it. But again, if you're a non-customizer and you just wanna make one of these recipes, you can buy the painted parts, put them on your figure and go to town. Um, if the painted sale sells out quickly, we will consider doing another painted sale. Um, one of the things that Len wants to do is he doesn't want to do a sale. And if you miss it, say you're never gonna have access to this again. Um, he does, he's not gonna be putting out a ton and ton, a ton of parts. He is gonna have a lot of cool stuff, but he wants people to have access to this. Some of his parts are probably gonna be evergreen. There are gonna be things that are gonna be, you're gonna be able to buy anytime you want. There's gonna be other stuff that will have limited windows, but they'll probably bring them back every once in a while so people do have access to them again. Let's see, Luis joined, nice to have you here. Joined a while ago, cause I'm getting it. <laughs> Someone's cracking me saying, little boom boom. So me calling it a boom boom, that's from, if you've seen those review videos by Alberto, where the, the powerful reviews, if you've seen those, the one that he does of Perplore, where he talks about putting the tail, he says, you put the tail in the boom boom. Um, and since I heard Alberto say that, I've been referring to butts as boom booms because I think it's very funny. So that's why I call it a boom. Travis says, I wonder what kind of person finds that. Uh, I'm going to skip. There's a whole bunch of comments here around the time that I was talking about the boom booms that I'm just going to skip. I'm just going to go right past all of those because they're ridiculous. Guillermo, nice to have you. Nate Barch, nice to have you here as well. Diego, Joe Viteri. Oh, thank you very much. Joe saying fantastic work. Thank you very much, Joe. Having a hard time getting down to these comments. It's probably because they're so me. Jennifer saying I pay $25 for a painted head on eBay. That's a great price. Can't wait for these. Thank you very much. <laughs> Stimulus money coming in. Yes. It's it's honestly it's not intentional. Like I said, we're working on this for months. We're working on this long before COVID-19 was something we were all dealing with. Um it just happened to work out that they're coming out around this time. Um, Matt saying, please limit the number you can buy so everyone can get them. Um, we've talked about that. I don't know what we're going to be able to do, but I will tell you, Matt, that if someone goes in there and tries to buy the entire run, we will not allow it to happen. We, we just won't. Um, if someone really does want a larger quantity, Len will reach out to them and talk to them about them separately. But the goal here is not to have one person buy 50% of the run. The goal here is to get these into people's hands. So absolutely, Matt, we're on the same page. We want people to get these. We don't want this to be to just one person. And we're ta I'm talking whether it's about the unpainted or painted. <laughs> Eric saying you have 40 people ready to buy right now. The number's bigger than 40, so. Very good. Uh, Dave saying, what's the site again? David, I haven't given the site name yet because I don't want you all to leave my show to go look at the site. So I'm gonna wait until the end of the show to give you the website address. That's how, that's how we work on this. Um, Eric saying limit sales per person. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not letting and grab a whole one. If someone does want to buy these in larger quantity, we will certainly, you know, Len will talk to them outside of the normal ordering process. Um, also, you know, I would offer to everyone here, um, bear with Len. This is the first time that he's put this together. So there may be some bumps that we encounter along the way. Um, you know, we're all fans. We have the best of intentions here. Um, we're going to get them to you as quickly as we possibly can and make it so as many people can get them as possible. Uh, I'm going to show you a few other things that I have here and then I'm happy to answer questions. So one of the, the
pieces I showed today back to the Arctic Fox was I showed a Arctic Fox on a Thwick body, which the Arctic Fox on the Thwick body, that's another great, great recipe. Um, when I put the white head on Talon Frostbow to make that snow fox, I really liked the way that looked, but I also wanted to do a small critter body. I had thought about doing it on Ragna Stormforger to keep the, the white head as female, um, but as soon as I put that white head on Thwick, I loved how it looked. Um, and again, you'd have to paint the neck on this, um, you know, white to match the head, um, but that I thought was a really cool looking figure. I like the way that looked, and a lot of people like that today. Um, that's a super easy recipe, but I also want to show you that you're not restricted to these simple, simple recipes. So this is a piece I haven't shown yet. I'm showing it for the first time to all of you. I'm not going to actually show it on my, my feed until like Friday. I took that same build, that thick body with the Arctic Fox head, and I added a whole bunch more stuff to it to make this character here, my Arctic Explorer. You know, this fur piece is from a Star Wars Black Series figure. He's got a bunch of stuff on his back, a bunch of packs and everything. And check out that cool hammer weapon. Isn't that cool? That is a sneak peek at another one of the parts that Wolf King Customs is going to be offering. That hammer will not be part of the Kitsune sale, but this is an example of one of the other pieces that he's been working on. How cool is that, huh? So, if you start with those simple recipes, for my fellow customizers, you can still take it a lot further and do some really, really cool stuff with this. Another one that I did was this character here. This is my main character. This is my main Kitsune character. So this actually uses the larger body with the samurai on it. Um, I'm going to post this tomorrow. And actually, if you've ever, I don't know how many uh, comic fans I have watching, ma manga fans or whatever, there's a, a well-known manga called Lone Wolf and Cub. Um, actually, a lot of the a lot of the storylines from the Mandalorian show uh, with, you know, the child and the Mandalorian, a lot of that, uh, the director said, John Favreau said, that he took a lot of those uh, comics from Lone Wolf and Cub. It's a Japanese manga. It's really cool about uh, like a ronin that travels the land with his young son acting as an assassin looking to get revenge on a slight that he, you know, his house was dishonored and his wife killed. So I actually made these two as my tribute to Lone Wolf and Cub, and I call them Lone Fox and Pup. So this is Lone Fox and Pup, and obviously one uses the bigger build, one uses the smaller build to have these large and small samurai that go together in my display. They're right at the front of my Mythic Shogun's displays. Something else that's kind of cool, um, this color variation is not going to be available for sale uh, in pre-order. This particular figure might actually be one I put for sale this coming Saturday. So talk about that in a little bit, but I did so many of these pieces as part of this process, and I did it for a couple reasons because I had to test different painting techniques to figure out what the best way to paint these efficiently was going to be. Um, I had to come up with the recipes that you see here. I had to take all of the photographs that you're going to see on the website, all the photographs you've seen on my social media all week. To do all of that, I ended up with a ton of these pieces. A bunch of them are in my collection. Um, this this Arctic Explorer, that is in my collection, that is staying in my collection. Um, that Samurai, my Lone Fox and my Lone Fox and Pup, those are my pieces. But I still ended up with a bunch of extras. So I am going to be selling some full customs this coming Saturday. I'll talk about that more in a moment. But this is one that I did just to see what it would look like. This is a crazy color variation that I call my Firefox. So this one is actually painted with like 
reds and oranges and yellows to kind of simulate like a fire-like look. Um, and he's got this whip and this sword. I kind of gave him weapons reminiscent of the Lord of the Rings Balrog and his cape that he has here. This this King Noglin cape already, especially when he's displayed down, it flays out and almost looks like flames. And same thing, his tail is painted with all these like flame-like colors. So this Firefox is a design. This is not a recipe I created for the site. This color variation is not one that's going to be offered for sale. It's one that I just did to see what it would look like. Um, I haven't decided yet, but this one might be one of the ones I put up for sale Saturday. So those are some examples of what I've been putting together. I do have a few that I haven't shown tonight um, that I, you'll see later on my, my Instagram later in the week. I did want to save a couple sneak peeks for you, a couple, excuse me, a couple surprises for you. I'll give you a sneak peek on a few of them, um, but I still wanted there to be something for everyone to look at coming up. Let me get some more uh, comments, answer some questions, and then talk a little bit more about Saturday's sale, and I get some other, another cool teaser to show you. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Patrick Boyle saying he found the website. <laughs> uh, Arctic Explorer looks awesome. Thank you very much. Wow, that hammer is nuts. Yeah. That hand is really, really cool. Thank you all very much. Um, and again, you know, let me step back for a second. Thank you to everyone, not only tonight, and everyone who's going to watch this play. Thank you to everyone that's commented and liked all of the, the posts this week. Um, you know, I'm genuinely, when I everybody, I'm genuinely appreciative. Of all, all of your support, I'm lucky to be able to do what I do. Um, the people with this stuff and they want on some of it. I'm incredibly fortunate for for, for Four Horsemen Studios. Um, trust me, I, I'm when I say thank you, it's as someone who is very humbled by all of this outpour of love. Um, same thing, Len and Walter. They've been, I've been changing, exchanging so many messages with all of them this week, or with both of them this week. Um, they're incredibly enthused by the response that this prod has received. Uh, we're, like I said, very excited for you as a very excited to actually get these in your hands. Um, and right now, at the end of this show, when I give you the website address and you go check it out, um, you get to see the stuff. I already told you what the prices are going to be. It's probably going to be about a week before we put those on sale. We'll give you a heads up in advance of that so you are aware. And once again, we will be limiting so as many people as possible can get these. That being said, if you miss out on a paint on the painted sale, don't fret. We will if, if the demand is there, we will do a second one. It may take us a little while to get to it because we got to fill the first orders first. And then obviously they're going to do the unpainted one. Um, but if you really, really want these, do not fret. You will have access to them. The only thing I, I ask you is don't message me personally. Don't message me looking for like a hookup or something. Um, I am not, other than the few that I'm selling on Saturday, I am not selling these parts myself. This is all being fulfilled by Len. So please don't message me asking for a hookup. I wish I could do it, but I can't do it for everybody. So unfortunately, I have to do it for no one. Um, okay, any other questions? What else you want to talk about? Thank you all. I'm so excited. Oh, want to see something else cool? So another example of what Len is going to be putting out. I showed you that hammer. So that hammer is an example of just a separate, it's not part of a kit or anything like that. It's just a cool piece that you can add to anybody. How about this? Check out this guy. Look at that hammer. So this piece here is something that Len sculpted. This, he took a piece and modified it heavily. This is just a cool hammer topper. Very Cool, almost like anvil. Like it's got an anvil. You can see it has an anvil motif on it, and this plugs in right to the 
of existing wholesale weapon. So you get this cool like camera with one fingers. Cool add on, add some additional. I mean, obviously, you need an ogre figure to do that with. Um, so if you don't have one, th these are awesome figures. If you don't have one of the ogres, these Mythic Legions ogres are amazing. Um, but just a cool little addition um, that is going to add a little something to your figures. Love that piece. He sent me that. I had nothing to do with this, by the way. This was a piece when I said that Len had already been working on stuff prior to him doing these for me. Um, this is an example of one of the pieces that he would already been working on. He sent this to me just to see what it looked like, just to say, hey, he threw it in with some of the kids and parts that I was getting. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, you got to be kidding me. And it's, it's actually wonderfully nice. I mean, there's all this detail in it. Really, really nice piece. Isn't that cool? Oh, so cool. Love that. As soon as I got it, I gave that to Bothar. I was like, yeah, you're going to be holding that weapon. <laughs> Douglas saying, you're not going to hook up any of your hundreds of closest friends? I wish I could. Uh, so very cool. Um, any other questions that you have for me? What do you want to talk about? Like I said, this is just, you know, one of the things that's cool is I mentioned earlier that Len is somewhat of a shy person. Um, he's quiet, reserved, incredibly smart, incredibly creative, but a little shy. Um, you know, Len should be the one on here talking about his company and his project today. Um, but I think Len would prefer to uh, be in his workshop doing some of the printing. Um, me, on the other hand, I thrive with an audience. I thrive being able to present things that I'm enthusiastic about. So even if these weren't going to eventually be sold by Len, I would just be talking about how excited I am to have these cool customs to work on. Um, and, you know, you've seen, again, these are all Mythic Legions figures because this is a Mythic Legion show, but these are not Mythic Legion specific parts. All of these pieces can totally totally be used on other toy lines. Um, I'm going to have one more post that I'm going to do tonight after the show is done where I actually used one of these pieces on my custom Zartan figure. That's like a, uh, it uses a Fortnite figure and it's awesome. It made a really cool like Kitsune Zartan figure. I'm going to post that afterwards. So these work really, really well. The Kitsune Boba Fett last night was super cool. Even like the Kitsune Spaceman that I did. Um, so I collect stuff besides Mythic Legions. If you want to throw these on other figures as well, you can absolutely, absolutely do that. Uh, very, very cool. I'm excited to be promoting it. I'm excited for what Len's going to have coming. Um, you know, I won't be... I won't be here talking about all of his releases because it's his company. He's going to be doing that. Um, but as he sends me stuff to test out, just like I talk about, you know, other people's stuff. Um, I got a bunch of pieces recently, actually, from Sabadam from his PlanetaryDogToys.com. Um, awesome products. Uh, Nikki recently showed, like, the big fat belly that she had on a goblin. Um, I just got one of those in wonderfully cool piece um so just like i would talk about any of those other artists i'll talk about lens stuff as well and then occasionally maybe he'll do a little project for me personally that i'll have even more to say on <laughs> a lot of people saying here's my bank account take it i want these um yeah pretty soon pretty soon you'll have access to them so the first chance you will have at these, again, like I said, I ended up with a number of extra pieces just from, from doing some of the tests. So the pieces that I have might differ slightly from production. For example, these tails are hollow. Um, I tried a few different ways to print these. Printing them solid obviously uses a lot more resin um, but resin's not wildly expensive, 
And the reality is, as he was explaining to me, I don't, again, this is all new to me. So he's explaining the 3D printing process to me, which is fascinating. And what he was telling me is these are hollow, which makes them easier. They're easier to use because they're not as heavy. He did send me one solid one, um, but it, it ended up breaking on me. He was still working out the, the connection piece a little bit. The hollow ones I like because they're really, really light, but they're actually hard for the drying process that he has to do for the hollow. He ends up messing up on um, the 